Hello viewers, good afternoon. Well, personally I'm not a big fan of Western literature, but one time JF Kennedy had this to say. He said that the peace and stability of the USA can only be sustained if there is peace and stability elsewhere. Well, our neighbors just next door, the Democratic Republic of Congo, has had an ending conflict. And this afternoon we convened to explore the conversation around the root cause of this conflict, but also how can member states in this region be able to contribute to the pacification of DRC Congo, largely the eastern part, which has become ungovernable. Well, that and much more on this episode of the, of the Citizens Chat Show. Viewers, welcome to this episode. I'm joined by a panel of uh, distinguished citizens. Today we have only two. That is now my humble pleasure to introduce to you. A usual face on this show, Dr. Sarah Birete, a lawyer, and the Executive Director of Center for Constitutional Governance. Dr. Mene, thanks for joining us this afternoon. Thank you, Moses, and good afternoon, viewers. Good afternoon to you too. Well, uh, Mr. Dismas Nkunda, who is the first timer on this show? No. No. Oh. Third. Oh, third timer. Yeah. Well, it's, I think it's my first time hosting you on this yes. show. Yes. <laughs> Dismas is a co founder and CEO of uh, a Trustees Watch Africa. Many thanks for joining us. Thanks, Moses. Thanks for having me. Well, with the, my dear sister, Doctor. <laughs> sure. Doctor, let me just uh, start with you right away. Mm. The conflict in DRC. Mm. Before we even go into examining how best can member states contribute towards pacifying this region, can you first of all examine the root cause? Why has DRC, more so the eastern part, become ungovernable? We know that uh, member states have attempted to have uh, missions. With, we know of Operation Shuja, among us, but let's first examine the root cause of the unending conflict in DRC. In your own words. Yeah, thank you, Moses. You know, DRC is a, a country vast in territory, but also greatly enriched with the minerals, all minerals needed in the world, be it cobalt, diamonds, gold, and uh, the, the, the mineral used for making phones. That's a colton. Colton. Yeah. Every mineral you <coughs> need is, a, is found in the RSC. So I think one would ask that why would God bless such a country mm. with every richness that could be there under, under the earth mm. and then it's mad in confusion right from pre-colonial era up mm. to date. DRC has been the sick man of Africa since independence. It is now the sick man of the world. The war has never ended in DRC. Since independence, there has always been a conflict in one or the other in DRC. You need to look, you don't need to look far to mm. look for the causes. People are always fighting for minerals. When King Leopard extracted the minerals, mainly copper and uh, diamonds, to develop Beridium, mm. and the struggle that sparked off the end of slave trade by, by Moore and then Mark Twain and others, the people were seeing an exchange of minerals from DRC to Beridium, and what was coming out of Beridium were guns and military officers. Mm. So Congo has permanently had this exchange of guns for minerals since the time of King Leopard. When the fight for ending slave trade ended and the Congo got independence, the architecture that King Leopard was using to exploit DRC minerals mm. just changed faces. So you had a change from uh, khaki suits or shorts to now modern suits mm -hmm. of exploiters of DRC. I, I want to give an example of Dan, Dan Gitler, the mm -hmm. richest man in Israel. <clears throat> At 47 years, he's the richest man in Israel and all the sources of his riches are from corruption tendencies in DRC. When uh, Joseph Kabila or Kabila Sr. was in power, Dan Gitler entered DRC in 1997. He did not have his luck in the first two or so, and also years. And in 2000, at the height of the Civil War to remove Kabila Sr. from power, 
Dan Gitla got his opportunity to strike a deal with Kabila Senior for dollars and weapons in exchange of minerals. He got monopoly to exploit diamonds, monopoly to trade in gold mm. in exchange of a few dollars and weapons. And, and Kabila Senior was happy to get the weapons. Mm. So when Kabila Senior died, he struck the same deal with Kabila Junior. Mm. Or Joseph Kabila. And, uh, so, the other one was Laura, this one is Joseph. Yes. Yeah, Laurent, yeah. Yes. So now he's the richest man in, in, in Israel. He's valued in billions of, of dollars, all from DRC. His business, I think, is valued at about 1.3 mm. trillion mm. dollars, according to the latest publications. And if you look at the reports in uh, recently in BBC and, and other international media, because he came under sanctions by the US for two years for trade for corruption tendencies in his trade, especially the monopoly licenses to trade in diamond and gold from DRC. So he fought off the sanctions and and, and after two years he yeah. got off the, the sanctions, the Magnitsky Act sanctions. Mm -hmm. So there the, the are several faces that you can attach from the exploiters or conflict entrepreneurs like Dan Gitler, together with the, the military hardware factories or industries in the US and Israel, mm. you can touch, you can now bring in the middle, the middle merchants. And, and these middle merchants are our leaders in the region. Mm. I have to just bring in this much right there. No, mm. just a minute mm. as I conclude this. So the middle mech merchants mm. facilitate or do what the Dan Gettlers cannot do. Mm. And then the third aspect that is, has been a cause for the DRC conflict is then the weakness, the limitations of government, government presence, especially in Eastern DRC. Mm. If you look at the... You know, government is so thin on the ground, and then you let militias, you let the middle merchants like uh, Uganda the, and Rwanda also exploit the instability mm. in Eastern DRC to exploit mm. oil, and the peace cannot benefit their trade. Well, thank you, Doctor. Uh, Mr. Dismas, uh, Doctor has focused more on the, um, on the external factors. She seems to cite more of the external players. But in your own words, do you think that the 32 years of Mobutu Sese Seko could have had a contribution towards DRC, where it is today? Now, those 32 years, is that something to examine critically? <clears throat> you know, um, I've just come from, from Xoro, and I tried to cross over to DRC. Mm. And, um, and, I come, and my home is five kilometers to the, bo the Congo border. Mm. So I have observed in my age, what has been happening on DRC until now. 32 years of Mobutu, it's the same what the doctor is telling you. There, was, there is zero presence of government in Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo. Now, given the, rich, the riches that she has described, and then you have this vast area that is uncontrolled, and you have all the kind of attention. Uh, uh, <coughs> Dr. Sara is being very polite. Uganda exports more diamond, and we don't have even a single diamond in the country. A UNDP report did mention that Uganda was one of the biggest exporters of minerals that we don't mine in the country. Yeah. Plus gold being our number one. Our number one. Foreign exchange, and when we don't. So where do we get it from? <laughs> well, <laughs> there is a place where it is free to be, to be picked. Now, at the same time, Mobutu, Mobutu government was possibly the most um, thin on the ground. Now. Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo has the Banyamulenge, mm -hmm. a group of people that originally came from Rwanda. They are Rwanda-speaking Tutsis, cattle keepers, much more affiliated to Rwanda. And this group of people, <clears throat> Mobutu actually is partly a cause because Mobutu gave them what they were demanding is citizenship mm -hmm. in, in DR Congo. Mm -hmm. So the, 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 the first constitution of DR Congo refused them citizenship and said they are foreigners, they should leave. Mm. But m because Mobutu wanted to maintain a certain level of grip on that particular rich area of Congo, mm. he decided to give them citizenship. But when they became two citizens, then they started demanding too many 
things too much. Economy, in leadership of the country, they tried to undermine uh, Mobutu Seseko, mm. and eventually he withdrew the citizenship. Mm. So what you hear that is happening of M23, M23 mm. is partly a creation of a vacuum. Mm. But that vacuum, that creation has been supported by a number of, of regional countries, countries that have a deep interest. Uganda has Shuja inside Democratic Republic of Congo. Uganda is building kilometers, 218 kilometers of roads in Democratic. Have you ever heard of a country going to build roads in another country? In, in, when even your country, your own country, you don't have all the areas of the country are not covered, but you are building. Why would you want to build roads in another country that's not yours? What would be the interest? DRC has 133 militias, 133 operating in Democratic Republic of Congo. Each of those militias has an, a, 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 a group they ally to. Some of them are pro-government. It's funny to say that a militia is pro-government, but some of those militias are pro-government, and others are rebel-affiliated. Now, just to give you an example, ADF, <clears throat> the Allied Democratic Forces of Uganda, reached a point of this vacuum that exists in Democratic Republic of Congo, that they started people, uh, the local residents paying them tax. Paying to ADF taxes. Mm. Uh, because it, they control territory? Yes, they control territory. They control business. Mm. So, so uh, anyway, it's not something that one can put in a, even in a dissertation. It would be very difficult to describe what Congo is. Mm. But in a, a short synopsis, Democratic Republic of Congo is there for everybody to take. Mm. The point is, who has more strength to? To take more. To take more. Mm. Now, the point which brings in the current, the current uh, gymnastics that we have, M23 was dead for two, five years. Mm. It was defeated politically by the combined force of the, the forces that were in India, Malawi, uh, Tanzania, ETC. The military wing of M23 came to Uganda. It was interned in your, in your, in your area there down in, in Ivanda. Mm. <clears throat> the political wing went to Kigali. Mm. So how did the group that was <clears throat> being kept in the, that place in Ivanda in Uganda kept under a military camp. Mm. How did they go back to Rwanda to resurrect? Now, I was speaking to a Monosco, uh, one of the, the, the commanders in the uh, Monosco, the, that's the UN force in, in DRC, and was telling me he has never, and he, he says, I have been in this business of peacekeeping for quite a long period of time. Mm. I have never seen a well-equipped guerrilla group like M23. So, so where does M23 get that equipment? And is it by coincidence that M23 resurrects at a time when <clears throat> Uganda has accepted, one, DRC has accepted Uganda to go and pursue the ADF in, in DRC? Is it by coincidence? So there are a lot of things that we need to unpack around this conflict and why it is happening at this current time. Well, well those are very intriguing thoughts and questions. Uh, doctor, let me just come back to you. The government of... Uh, the government of Congo has managed to have grip and control over Kinshasa. But as you both assert, they have failed to have control, they have failed to have state presence in the eastern part of Congo. I don't know, is it an indictment on their government that they have, I don't know, because a government has the responsibility and mandate to protect the lives and property of citizens. So how then have they failed to have control over the eastern part? Is it because they lack the military power? Is it because where have they failed? And yet they have controlled the other part of Congo. I think the, the answer I will give you is two way. They have structural weaknesses. The mm. government of Chinsasha has structural weaknesses because of the vast nature of the country. During the discussions under the inter-Congolese dialogue, mm. there, there were calls for federation using a federal a system of governance mm. to make the region semi-autonomous and have the center just coordinating with the regional governments because of it, it's too it's too big mm. the, the size of the country so you need a very strong government mm. with strong institutions to take full control of, of such kind of territory but then my other answer is that given the deals that are now in the open that are struck by, by presidents with the 
the, the new colonial exploiters, the, the, the replacements of King Leopard, like Dan Gitler, who mm. strikes deals with the Chinsasha government to go and uh, have monopoly of mining in East and Yaras, it could be deliberate. If you look at the militias that are aligned to government, it could be deliberate because those are the spaces mm. where now these businesses use to, to, to exploit minerals. Mm. Mm. So it's both, <coughs> it's both ways. Mm. You know, uh, Moses, DRC mm. has borders with nine countries. Nine. Mm. From Angola to Central African Republic, Sudan, Burundi, Tanzania, Uganda, Rwanda. Now, <coughs> it, is, it is a very big country. Now, extreme, with no communication. Kinshasa, in order for you to travel from Kinshasa to come to Goma, you have to fly. You can't travel by road. Mm. Now, it is dense jungle, mm. very, very heavy vegetation and forestry. Mm. Yeah. So, because of its vastness, there are countries which are big, but they are managed. Yeah. Mm. But for, for it, it has be, been left to remain thus because, of, because if it is managed well, then the exploitation we are talking about will not happen. Yeah. Mm. So it has deliberately, it is deliberately failed. It is given weak structures, like she's saying, mm. the weak presidents, individuals who only are there to strike deals. Yeah. And the moment those deals, people become extremely very rich. If you look at it, uh, the young Kabira, mm. by the time he left power, the amount of wealth that he has, he is going to live in happiness until until he dies. Yeah, the, yes. the, 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 the failed governance mm. benefits the political elite as well as the external conflict entrepreneurs. Mm. So the, 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 the people who are in politics can strike deals and, and benefit. The only disadvantaged person is the ordinary citizens of, of Chinsasha who are always on the move, extremely poor. Mm on the move because of conflict, with no place to call home, with no stability, and in extreme poverty. Mm. They are the most disadvantaged people. Well, uh, this must, just coming back to you, you both describe the, the comprado bourgeoisie, the, the allies of the external forces who are cracking the deals and making the money. But I think not so long ago, the president of uh, DRC, came out to say that they had no money to hold elections. I don't know if you remember that statement that was mm -hmm. made. So now <clears throat> I'm trying to get my mind around the fact that a country has no money to hold its general elections, but then there are but all these mineral resources, the world. but then they are cracking all these deals. How is it possible? <laughs> are they negotiating badly? Are, but you see, you are, you are assuming that that, money, that money goes to government. <laughs> It goes to individuals. Those, uh, that, those are illegal deals. That is corruption. It's, it's money which you crack a deal, you mm. take your money, you don't give it to government. You give me money. There's you no give taxation them process. So, meaning government is not negotiating. It's to... not the government, mm. it's individuals. So, you will come like the, the, the person she's describing. You'll mm. go and meet the, the minister of minerals. Yes. Mm. And yes. they'll strike a deal, and the person, they'll go and control. Control an area the size of, uh, you know, of Nakao. Mm. And all the minerals in that place you don't touch. You mm. have your own militia, mm. you have your own airport, you fly them out of the country, exit place, exit them to Entebbe, Entebbe flies them to Dubai. Mm. You are done. You know, when Dan Gitla was sanctioned by the US, mm. the <coughs> sole reason he was sanctioned was doing business using corrupt means at the expense of the Congolese people. Mm. This Monopoly licenses mm. do not, are not taxed. You sit with the president, negotiate, give them their kickbacks, mm. go and exploit your minerals and fly out. People fly in with personal jets, mm. pack their minerals and leave. There, are, there is no customs union, mm. no declaration, nothing. So that's why. The, but there are the some, there are some countries which are very smart, actually, mm. that they even set up, uh, for example, Rwanda, it set up a, a desk of Congo business in one of their ministries. And the purpose of that particular desk was to manage the importation of minerals in Congo 
use it, but for them they would tax inside the, their own country they would tax in the other no in, 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 in Rwanda, Rwanda. Mm. they would tax and make it legal that they have imported they have brought these minerals you know but in Congo it's the reverse mm. but but then I I don't know I'm trying to get my mind around the fact that a government is not very concerned that because the deal crackers are some of part of government like you did hypothetically mention that mm. some could be ministers and all that. Mm. I don't know, how do you preside over a government and you somehow know that you're, you're very blessed and endowed with natural resources at, at, some, at some part of the country? Don't you then have to pick more interest and actually, you know, I don't know, restore normalcy or, or, or do more to have safeguards there? Let me break do you it think down it, for is, you, it is intentional even for the government? Because for the deal breakers, I would understand they are profit oriented, they are there to make the money. But for the government who knows that this is going on, shouldn't it be more deliberate? Let me break it down for you. When did we discover our oil? 2006. Do we, that's the commercial quantity. The, the commercial quantity, yeah. Do we have means to get the oil from the ground? We have just As found of today. means of. Not yet. We are still struggling with things like ACOP and others. Yeah. So in DRC, like for example, I, I won't stick to this to the examples of Roland Kabila and Dan Gitler. Mm. Dan Gitler flew to the at Chinsasha when he was 23 years. Mm. And when he met Kabila, he said, I, I have dollars mm. and I have weapons. And you are faced to a civil strife. Mm. You need to keep yourself in power. Mm. You don't have money because as much as there are minerals in the ground, mm. you need to be organized to get them out mm. in order for the country to benefit. Mm. So at that material time, the immediate needs of Kabila Senior was to protect himself in power. Mm. And he needed a few coins because the treasury was empty. Mm. So, uh, and in exchange of that was a monopoly license. Mm. And you, you get the dollars, you get training for your army because you don't even have a proper army mm. that can fight back the, the, the insurgency and, mm. uh, and, 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 and safeguard your control to power. Mm. So at that time, Dan trained the army in Chinsasha, gave Kapila Senior a few dollars and pocketed his monopoly license mm. for cobalt, gold, and diamonds. Mm. And Kabila was able to sustain himself <coughs> in power for a few more years, mm. three years. Until he was assassinated. So there is and the young Kabira mm. had met Dan through his dealings with, with the a father. father. Mm. And he had no other choice because he was also faced with insurgents. Mm. The likes of Jean Pierre Bemba and the others mm. were about to take him out of power. So at that time, you don't even have the means mm. to talk of the minerals which are underneath the ground. Mm. You need to immediately stabilize mm. yourself. Mm. And that's how these exploiters mm. get the licenses or the monopoly or take advantage of the situation. Mm. And in case you don't deal with them, then they will go to those fighting you mm. and say, you know, we can overthrow him in six months. And this is the strategy. And mm. then your enemy can buy it. Mm. <laughs> And, and precisely, that's what happened in 19, <laughs> in, in, 1990, in 1998. Oh. Um, you know, you know how the International Court of Justice slammed Uganda with the, with the paying 200 uh, and the, uh, 215 million dollars mm. because of Uganda's exploitation of Democratic that Republic of Congo. That was after negotiation from 10 million. Mm. Yes, 10 billion. billion 10 billion. Mm. So, so the point is. All these countries have a presence. In other words, you cannot, they cannot leave Congo alone. Mm. It's impossible. And they cannot let it stabilize. It cannot. Like today, if and, and don't, you cannot distance the resurgence of M23 mm. with a global recession. Yes. Mm. Our countries are bankrupt. Mm. Uh, we are choking on debt. We have had borrowing conditions. But there is a neighbor where you can pick some minerals mm. and, and get some coffers into your treasury mm. or for your means, even if you don't put in the national treasury, mm. for your means to keep power. Well, mm -hmm. this was just to get back to you. <laughs> mm. It is trite knowledge by now that there is so much human rights violations taking place mm. in Eastern DRC. Is it peculiar to you that the international community has not come out to strongly either condemn or to levy sanctions, or to maybe investigate, or to 
to really intervene in a much more decisive and much more intentional manner. They are, by obvious? the way. They are. They are. It's, it's, they may be, they are not to the same level, for Extent, example. Maybe. Uh, yeah, mm. yeah. To the same level of, let's say, for example, the intervention, the current intervention on Tigray and Ethiopia. Mm. But I know, for example, the United States. The State Department, is, I think two days ago, they issued a statement warning Rwanda. Mm. Warning Rwanda to stop its activities of supporting M23 mm. because of the violations that are happening. And in particular, uh, their attack on the UN force, Monosco. Mm. You know, Monusco, the other day in, in Eastern DRC, there's a, a town called Rumangabo where they had a garrison. Um, they escaped. They ran away. M20, Monusco? Monusco ran away. From mm. attacks? Yes. And so has M23, M23 taken their took garrison? Over. Yes, took over the garrison. They just walked in. There was no one. So when they were asked, they said, we had to take a tactical withdrawal because we are not uh, well equipped to repulse the enemy. That is the UN. So mm. the United States, for example, has been issuing statements about the, the various violations that are happening. But now it seems it has come back to roost because uh, Rwanda's ambassador was expelled mm. from DRC. Uh, I, I we have just learned that Uganda's ambassador is actually on his way to being expelled mm. from Rwanda, from sorry, DRC, on the same accusations of Uganda's support for M23. Mm. And in the case of Uganda, it is born out of the statements that have been made by the former Land, uh, land Force Commander, General Ken Rugaba, mm. who said in a tweet that him and his uncle Paul Kagame, they will make sure that, that uh, uh, their brothers across in the Eastern DRC don't, uh, can't be defeated. And what did he mean by the brothers? Do we know what, who he exactly was, he referred to? He was clear and said that M23, <laughs> our brothers can't be defeated. <laughs> okay, but, but still, uh, Doctor, <laughs> Just to get back to you, because before I begin to <clears throat> indict the United Nations, let's talk about the African Union, really. These are African states that are in turmoil. Shouldn't the African Union be more, I don't know, be more concerned about this? Because from where I stand, I haven't seen them take any further step. They have been quiet about it, even when the chair of the African Union was, is in fact the president of the DRC Congo. I would, I'd expected that because he had assumed that the chairpersonship of that organization, then maybe he would move the member states or influence them to pick more interest in pacifying the DRC. So is this an indictment on the African Union? Have they failed to... Because we saw them make statements when coups happened in, um, in Guinea. In Mali. In a... Yes, Mali. We saw <laughs> African Union saying that, no, no, this is wrong and all that. But Let that me help been, you. That been Moses, quiet. Moses you, I think you're a good man. <laughs> You're a good man. You don't. Know, I think you don't know what what uh, ugly things that happen <laughs> in this, in this continent. Now, what has happened? What, hap what happened is that the African Union has actually s uh, stepped its own rhetoric about DRC for a long period of time. But for now, because it works in silos of saying that we have to give the mandate to the regional economic communities. Mm. So for now, they it's think East that they are the East African community, mm. which is the one now who is doing it on behalf of, of, Africa of the Africa Union. Mm. It's not enough, mm. um, but <clears throat> the Africa Union itself is a very weak institution. Yeah. Mm. Extremely very weak. You are talking of a combination of failed states. <laughs> And faded leaders. <laughs> and, and just to look, just to give you an example, Moses, mm. the Africa Union is based in Addis Ababa. That's right. Mm. The conflict in Ethiopia yeah. between Tigray mm -hmm. and, and, and the, yeah. it, right has, it has been there for how long? It's Since right 2020. Their doorstep. Yeah. They have never issued a single statement. Yes. So Not why would they more. act? Why would you expect them to act on the other side? I was in New York about when the UN General Assembly was happening, and I went to speak to the Africa Union representative to the UN. Mm. She's Nigerian. She just told me that I cannot speak about Ethiopia because it may have uh, diplomatic consequences for the presence of the African Union in Addis Ababa. So now, if you can't speak about a conflict that is in your compound mm. and you are the African Union, how about the one on DRC? How about the one which is very miles away? But also, do they have the capacity? If they don't. They Even if they were capacity. to speak. No, I, I think we need to mm. come to terms to, to the fact that African Union and, and these other groupings, other than the benefits, the economic benefits, they are a talking shop. 
Mm-hmm. So my call to the, even regarding East African community, given the leadership in the region, my advice to the East Africans is to concentrate on economic integration and forget about political integration. Because of the caliber of, of the leadership mm. in the region, I wouldn't be part of the citizens of East Africa being aggressively working towards integrating chaos. Mm. No. Well, this must just to get back to you. Let's just examine Uganda's role in pacifying because Uganda boasts of saying that you know they are the stabilizer and peace. Uh, Stabilizer is the word, mm. you know, that our military force is, is in DRC, is in South Sudan, you know, trying to pacify the region. Have we, pass, how, how would you examine our success of our forces in pacifying DRC Congo? Because we boast that we are doing so much good work there. The first time, the, the, the first time that Uganda had an inkling in DRC was the gold scandal with Ida Amin and Obote. Yes. yes. That's where it all began from. In 1998, Uganda goes in with other Mobutu countries. Mobutu had gone there to save Mobutu. Yes, to save Mobutu. From but that's, that's a long story that we are going too far. I don't know Moses <laughs> wasn't born at that time. <laughs> so, but then we come in 1998, we go in to support Kabira, mm. to make sure that Kabira gets into power. Mm. What did we do? It is, and the people who looted are still in the government. That's the same people. Mm. They are in government in Uganda. They, and they, in Rwanda. And in Rwanda. And the soldiers still who, the were, who were commanding are oh. still here. And nothing has been done about them. In 1999, there was a, a Porter Commission, Justice Porter Commission. You remember Justice yes. Porter mm. Commission of Inquiry into Uganda's activities in DRC, UPDF activities in DRC. The then, many people thought it was a whitewash. The, the, the report actually named. This was a justice, was a white uh, British mm, guy. Mm. He was a, uh, actually, was he a judge? Yes, he was a judge. He was a judge. Mm. And the report was very clear as to who was responsible for the exploitation. If you remember that time, Sarah, it was a time when they would come and say, our soldiers came back with three wives. They would come back with cows. With, they looted anything that passed through in, in, in its way. Including mm. human beings. Including human beings. <laughs> So now that it's on the basis of that Porter report mm. that the uh, that the DRC took Uganda to the International Court of Justice mm. and hence the fine which you are paying you yes. from your taxes mm. were you uh, one of the looters in Congo? No. So why are you paying? Good question. Well, <laughs> doctor, <laughs> let's just examine the extent of the human rights violations. Can you well, uh, if we can, we can look a bit uh, at the recent peace efforts, mm. including the UN peace efforts, uh, the UN led the Inter Congolese dialogue, and that led into efforts like the International Conference on the Great Lakes, the Trapatite Plus mechanism. All these are efforts. The Trapatite Plus mechanism was aided by the, U- the uh, UK government. Mm. And then the other process was UN-led, UN-African Union-led. Efforts aimed at stabilizing the DRC. I think they've all gone to waste, given that after 20 years of engaging on peace in DRC, it is still business as usual. It is still the King Leopard architecture that is functional Mm. in Eastern DRC. Nothing has changed. Genocide. One of the worst genocides that have ever been committed was in DRC yes. by King Leopold. About people, 10 million people. Yes, 10 million people. They cut off their arms. And it's there. Documented. Mm. And it's still now. It's still the same things. If you go to, to Kisoro and you see the number of people who have fled the countries, the kind of wounds that they have. They, so the violations continue unabated mm. simply because, uh, you know, they are, they are, Sarah, you called them what? The people who trade in chaos, mm. the ones the who go, ah, the conflict entrepreneurs. This is the best time to make money. Yes. You just go on the border. I, I was in the border of Congo. I went to the border of Uga, of Rwanda, Uganda and Rwanda, and people are waiting. Just the capture of Goma, thousands of businessmen are waiting just to cross over and start uh, like the, looting. the looting and exploiting. <sighs> This, this, this is very complicated. <laughs> Doctor, just to Yeah, but, but then the wait, efforts. Mm. When the M23 was first defeated, it was a combination of SADC forces. Yes. Because even Tanzania is a member of SADC. SADC, yes. 
Tanzania, Marawi. South Africa, Malawi, mm. that came in to thrash out M23 rebels. And they, they did it successfully as a, as a, as a grouping, Sadak grouping. I remember the tweet by Jakaya Chupete then, mm. after the defeat of M23. So he said, there had to be adults in the room. <laughs> Meaning that it had to take President Zuma then, mm. with the President Jakaya Chukwete mm. and their counterparts, mm. to sort out the mess by Rwanda and Uganda in Eastern DRC under M23. So given that this time under the East African peacekeeping mission that was led by President Kenyatta, who is now no longer in power, mm. and when he left power, the Kenyan troops went home briefly. They are just planning to come back. He's also the special envoy for Ruto to the, on DRC. Yes, that is assuming that he has accepted He has the accepted, role. he accepted. You saw the statement? Yes, he accepted. Yeah, so when he left power, then the Kenyan troops left. Mm. But now I saw the statement uh, yesterday yes. that they are coming back. Mm. But to what extent can the 1,900... You know, nine, uh, I think uh, Kenya is sending 900, about 1,000. Uganda is, is, is sending two battalions mm. and South Sudan is sending one battalion. Mm. So how many are those? Battalions, those are how many? There's about uh, 1,000? So about 3,000. About 3,000. So about 3,000 troops mm. in the Eastern DRC with the highly equipped and highly sophisticated and highly funded M23. And supported. And supported. <laughs> Remembering that, if the allegations about Uganda are true, then you will have Uganda fighting at two fronts. Mm. Undercover. <laughs> oh, so what 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 route will they pass you? And under whose command? Under and under whose command? You are you are blamed for supporting and opening routes for M twenty three. While you were given opportunity to pass you a DF. So here you are part of the peacekeeping force, but you are a collaborator of M twenty three. Will you stop the robbers or you will facilitate the robbers? I think you'll be between the rock and a hard place. Mr. <laughs> <laughs> Dismas, yes. just to get back to you. Mm. And Rwanda and Uganda have come out in this issue so many times. But uh, there are people who subscribe to the school of thought that says that Goma is much more closer to Kampala or to Kigali than it is to, Ki than, than it is to Kinshasa. Mm. You want to... And therefore, it would be of much more interest to Uganda and Rwanda to actually pacify and to have more interest in Eastern Congo. And that the interest could not be exactly what we are accusing them of, that mm -hmm. they want to go and plant the minerals and they want to go and do all these things. But just because of the proximity of Goma to Kigali and Kampala makes them much more interested in the affairs of Goma than even Kinshasa. You can be interested, but you don't have to loot. You can, what is, what's wrong with having a relationship? If you, if they were interested mm. in no more bilateral yes. relations, mm. there would be nothing wrong with it. If, they, if people interested in trade in DRC mm. were interested in illegal, illegal exploitation mm. of natural resources, nobody would have a problem with that. And we would see an improvement in the lives of ordinary Congolese people. But the reverse is true in this situation. And two is that Congo, Congo you know Congo runs on the border of Uganda from Arua up to Kisoro. But the communities along that border, mm. they are actually integrated. They have relatives across. You go to Toro. There's the, the, the Hema in the, across. You go to Kisoro. There was talk of uh, people who would cross and vote in Kasese. Of course. And, and the tribes are shared across the border, just the border. like any other... Borders, I have a garden in Congo. So, mm. And they come are from... You you. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, but, uh, you know, you, you, can, buy, you can buy a piece of land <laughs> in mm. Congo and you, you, you cultivate it. So the point is... Rela people relating, it's very true what you said, Moses. Uh, Eastern Congo is more affiliated to Uganda and Rwanda mm. for obvious reasons. Mm. These are Bantu speakers, mm. uh, they are more, they do business across this side. Mm. If you so go to Kisoro, Kisoro has about one, about 20 buses leave Kisoro to Kampala every day. Mm. It's not people from Kisoro who are coming to Kampala. These are Congolese business people who are coming to buy things mm. from Uganda and they go back mm. and take them inside Congo. Mm. But the point is, People have used the, the, the what, what Sarah said 
the integration of people, the integration of people would make these some of these areas they don't need any political political integration mm -hmm. because people already do business between each other and this one has nothing to do with the border. It's something that has been there long, mm. long time ago. Mm. So the point is, Goma is near, uh, it's actually not near Uganda, it's near Rwanda, because mm. it's near the uh, Gisenyi, the, the border, uh, that, uh, it's Rubavu, yeah, Rubavu. Mm. Uh, and therefore, crossing, you cross over from, from, uh, from Rwanda inside Goma. Mm. And Goma is actually a very good town. So it has very good infrastructure, but why? Mm. Because in order to exploit it very well, you must have infrastructure, you must have good hotels. Controls mm. Nagana, but is it still M23? M23. Yeah. So you can't, even now you can't go to Goma, there's, there's no vehicles, no buses, nothing. Simply because M23 is in charge mm. and they are not sure who can cross and who can't cross. Doctor, the women and children who find themselves um, uh, across fire in Goma, the plight, their, their plight, will they ever see justice? I mean, can they dream of ever getting justice? Their rights have been violated, the young women, the, the children there, will they ever access justice? You know, it is, it's a very traumatizing situation. Because for the Congolese women, unfortunately, most of them have been raped by militias, by government forces, by money, mm -hmm. and by foreign troops. Yeah. So all these troops, nobody protects the dignity of women in Eastern DRC. The rate of sexual crimes, the use of rape as a weapon mm -hmm. for war, has never been practiced greater in any other part of the world than Eastern DRC. It's very terrible for women who find themselves between these situations. Very terrible. And uh, it's very shameful that even the original Monuk, mm. among the things they were accused of before the modification to Monusco, included sex crimes, and using sex, engaging in sex tourism. Very, very unfortunate, very terrible for women, very indignifying that all these terrible men interested in rooting DRC, nobody has the courtesy to protect women. And civil, civil society can't, can't even do much about it. They, they can't champion. I think the they, best they've done they is do. document. Document, all these reports are variable even mm. at the UN. Everybody has condemned use of rape as a weapon of war in DRC, mm. but it has never stopped. It has not changed, <laughs> including international peacekeeping troops mm. that are supposed to operate at a level higher mm. than the ordinary rud rudimentary militias. Yeah. This month, yes. DRC is the new kid on the block of mm. the ESC. Yes. Does their joining formally the ESC but also I know that they are, they are, are they part of SADAC? Yes. They are a part of SADAC as yes, well. Yes, yes. I don't know. Are they going to have conflicting loyalty on no. for, for their economic um, advancement? Actually, for them, it's conflicted? very good. For them, it's very good because mm. you can gain from both the blocks. So now we have two countries which are both members of yes. SADAC and, and that's in the ESC. That's, that's a DRC and Tanzania. Mm. Uh, but also the others mm. are part of ESC and Commerce. Yes, they're also yes. part of the ESC and Commerce. And the others also belongs to Commerce. To no, my point oh. is, oh. does that expose it more to, in fact, more conflict? Um, Being... You see, I, I would think that, that's what, uh, I think Sarah is the one who alluded to it. Mm. If, for example, DRC was no longer, was not formally part of the East African community, mm. I can assure you that Sadaka was going to be Yes. involved and they were going to flash out m23 yes. mm. sadaka would, uh, sadaka act, would better. act better in terms of of defending the, the, the that the, a member country mm. which has been attacked by you know um, other troops uh, by countries which are not members of the of the bloc but now because the uh, drc is a member of the east african community Sadak says, and the aggressors <coughs> are yes. also East African yes. community. Yes. So, the, so. The Sadak says, it's, this is a matter which you can sort out as East Africans, and that's why you find that Ruto has taken over the, the mandate of saying that he's, he's, he's going to take over. But the, the point is, Sadak is much more um, what do you call it? Organized. O more, more organized. 
Mm. It is powerful. To have, it has members which countries like South Africa, countries like you know Tanzania, countries which are robust enough, mm. countries which have high degrees of respect of human rights, countries mm. like yes, Botswana. but they also don't have sinister motives. Exactly. When it comes to DRC, like Uganda and Rwanda. So mm. that's why you find that Rwanda has been refused to join the East African Force. Mm. It's not. It's not part of it because uh, DRC said we can't allow. Uganda for the, eh? how do you join both sides? Exactly, they are Gurezza and the defender. <coughs> and the defender. Mm. No, but <coughs> DRC has been part of Sadak for some time. Yes, it has only joined the ESC less than a, less than a year ago. Yes. So can Sadak boast of saying that if uh, because the conflict in DRC is not a new conflict? No. Then why hasn't Sadak been able to? Because but M23, the, the last Sadak, M twenty three, M twenty three, the last time they caused the havoc in the capturing town is an. Who chased them out? It was Sadak. Sadak forces, we told you. It was Tanzania mm. and Malawi. Yes, mm. They chased them and actually they had intended to capture them. Yeah. Had it, Uganda and not it opened been for Uganda to, to open the, for the border. Them mm. And open for them to escape. They mm. would have captured them. Mm. I wish they had. <laughs> <laughs> doctor, doctor our, our president, who is President uh, Yorika Gutavu Seven, has a recent been ordained father of the region. <laughs> by 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 by, 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 by by another sovereign <laughs> by by another sovereign president. <laughs> you go president, that title. President William Ruto, <laughs> while while in in Kenya and and here as well, did ordain our president as father of the region. Does this place a bigger responsibility on Uganda to see to it that Congo returns to normalcy and stability is realized as quick as possible? Does that new stature place a bigger responsibility on us as a country? And therefore, it, it wouldn't be surprising if we acted with much more zeal and aggression. You see, well, where, is, oh, I'm, I'm saying, Moses, <laughs> yeah, I know it is informal. Mm. I'm saying you go on that title. Mm. Let me demonstrate for you how Seven lost that space of, of, of being a father of the region. The first international assignment that Felix had to do mm. was to bring together Museven and Kagame to talk as a six months old president. So if you are a father of the region and you are being called to order by a child mm. in terms of mm. presidency, what father are you? The, so when you don't conduct yourself as a statesman, if you do not offer leadership, because we are offering chaos at the moment, we are not offering leadership. So how can you be a father of the region when you are trading in militarism, when you are trading in chaos, when you are trading in instability? How then would you get to that respect that you are a father of the region? This was, what do you think? I, I, I mean, could I add on anything more? <laughs> You, you have, you can. in order for you, in order for you, look, look Moses, I mean, you, you know our cultural stand. In mm. order for you to be accepted as the head of the family and the person who speaks, you must conduct yourself in that nature. Yes. Mm. You, must show, the manner. You, you must show. You People must the, show cause. Yes. Mm. But the moment then you are part of the process of the chaos of bringing conflict in your, in your clan, mm. you cease being the, the lead of the clan. Mm. Well, um, let's just fast track the deployment process. Mm. Um, member states, I think, agreed to deploy their troops. But I know that um, there are certain countries that have either been stopped or they have voluntarily not um, uh, agreed. What does that mean for this particular uh, stability cause? Do you think that the member states who are either by intention or by design not being accepted to deploy their troops, is that an indictment on them that they are in fact part of the problem? Some countries make a choice. They make a choice as to whether they want to deploy depending on a number of factors. For example, Tanzania. I don't think that uh, uh, the president, the new president of Tanzania is well versed with exactly what is the motive behind all this. Um, so Tanzania, I think, has kept a, mm. a, a roof uh, about every process. I mm. think even the last, the last uh, uh, meeting that was held by heads of states, Tanzania sent an ambassador from Kenya. I Tan think they have misgivings. Yes. But if Tanzania mm. was acting under Sadak, mm. it wouldn't it be would, surprised exactly. to see them deploying. Yes. But I think they have misgivings about the ESC. The ESC mm. deployment. process and deployment. Because I actually argued somewhere, Moses, that it does not even make sense to ask which, if there was going to be 
a, a, a deployment in DRC, it shouldn't have Ugandan, it shouldn't it have Burundian, and it and shouldn't have Rwandan troops yeah. on them. We should, it, yeah, it should have been only maybe two countries, South mm. Sudan and Kenya. Mm. Because the other countries have... But does South Sudan have a name to talk of? Uh, yeah, sure. I, I, they have accepted. They said they are going to deploy a battalion. I don't mm. know where they are going to get it from, okay. but, uh, but they, they said they are going to send a battalion. Mm. The reason I'm saying that about those other countries, Moses, is look, Burundi has red Tabara rebels there. Mm. Okay? Red Tabara is a rebel group that has been fighting the government in, in Gitega for, how, for, for almost how many? Five years. I follow Burundi closely, so I know it for a fact. So, if you send in your troops to go and, and uh, defend peace in DRC, and inside that country there is a rebel group that you are pursuing, on which side would you be for? Would you be for? Would you fall? Rwanda has the former Hutu rebel, the Hutu government, the ones the, the, whom they call the genocides, mm -hmm. the ones who are operating in Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo. And you want them to deploy when they're also saying that they are supporting M23. Uganda has ADF in Congo. So Suja, so Suja becomes blamed. what? They and also Uganda is blamed yeah. for supporting M23. So uh, Operation Suja becomes what? But also how will Ugandan <clears throat> troops work? alongside a presence of other troops. Maybe Suja should first end. And then we leave the East African force. I actually just had... Take charge of the Eastern exactly. DRC. Exactly. Including dealing with ADF, ADF and crushing out all the other rebels. The most ideal situation for DRC, quick stability, lies with Sadak, not ESC. Well, viewers, this is a very interesting conversation. We know that you have opinions and views. There's a comment section right below the screen. Give us your comments. Give us your opinions. If you agree with any of the panelists, let us know. But also, if you disagree, give us your opinion. See you shortly after this commercial break. The Citizens Chatroom happens every Friday at 2 p.m. on Civic Space TV online on Facebook and YouTube. We invite you to be part of this conversation. Civic Space TV. Freedom always. Hello, viewers. Uh, we'll be back. Doctor, let me just uh, dive straight to the point with you. The refugees spill over. Mm -hmm. The more conflict happens in DRC Congo, is the more we shall have refugees coming into Uganda and other, other countries. Uganda is known for having an open-door policy regarding refugees. But I know that this also has an impact on our natural, already limited resources, land and things like that. Can you just explore the effect of the refugee spillover, first of all, within Uganda, then perhaps maybe the broader sense of the region? Well, Uganda has an open refugee policy, which is uh, good and bad. Mm. Good because it's uh, good to help people in need of shelter. And in the spirit of Ubuntu, Mm. then you shouldn't watch on as, as your neighbor is suffering. There's nowhere to put their head to, to rest and, and have a decent meal. Mm. So Uganda in this case, is, is the, the, the refugee policy is commendable in that aspect. There are two challenges, however. One is the strain on resources. And uh, we have been seeing government uh, recently, like in the last two weeks, trying to even close some of the refugee groupings because they, it's no longer sustainable. Two is the competition with the resources, even in the communities, the, host, the refugee hosting communities. And the, the disparities normally created, which make the locals think or feel like the refugees are more privileged than the local communities. The other challenge we have is that uh, with the, the deteriorating democracy and the deteriorating human rights record now in Uganda, then we are using the refugee hosting for political gain and international negotiations, which is not good for us as a country. But for the, for the DRC's crossing, looking for shelter, running away from, uh, from bullets and, uh, and uh, missiles, we need to welcome them mm. because they are in trouble. Mm. 
the trouble that is caused by internal neighbors and extra external far forces mm. to exploit their countries. That should be short term. Yeah. In the medium term, the the concerned or affected entities should find a stabilizing factor. For the DRC, for the DRC, Eastern DRC mainly, so that the Congolese people are able to settle in their homes, mm. and in the long term, try to work and ensure that the the, the resources of, of DRC are exploited to benefit the Congolese people mm. as a first priority. The other people who want to engage in mineral exploration and exploitation, they should do it through legal means to still benefit the DRC country as a sovereign entity mm -hmm. that owns these minerals. Do we find a solution in the neighboring ESC? I do not think so. And I wish to call upon the DRC forces to take matters regarding this conflict to SADC because of the vested interests and conflicting interests by ESC countries, they will not offer a solution. Thank you. Mr. Dismas, yes. your <coughs> comments regarding the refugee spillover, because I know that one of the biggest causes of conflict is, is in fact competition for natural resources. So are we trying to pacify DRC, at least in quotes, but forgetting that we could have conflict arising or brewing here at home, that because the Congolese who have come to Uganda and are trying to partake of the, of the land and the resources, there could be a new form of conflict arising domestically. How do you envisage the whole refugee spillover playing over, uh, playing out rather? Um, okay. Now I was in Iksoro for a week, and one of the main places where there were asylum seekers. Now there's a difference between refugees and asylum seekers. Mm. So the ones who came from Congo before you were given a status by the Uganda government, you are an asylum seeker. So these are the other ones who are hosted in Iksoro were asylum seekers. There are about ten thousand of them. Mm -hmm. And the space they were st staying in was very, very, very small mm -hmm. to the level that they, you know, they started encroaching on um, uh, properties of the, of the, the, the locals, mm -hmm. the, their gardens, and uh, the sanitary, and facilities. sanitary facilities, and uh, theft. <laughs> so it, it became very complicated. And then now, so what they did in the last one week was to, to tell them, we either take you to Nakivadi in Barara, which is a refugee camp, Mm. which is a settlement, which is set up to, to handle refugees since the 1960s. Uh, or if you don't want, then you go back to DRC. Mm. So majority of them decided to go back to DRC. Mm. <clears throat> but hardly had they crossed the, the border in Bunagana. Uh, M23 was telling them, you come back, come back, come back. <clears throat> so when they hardly had they crossed over to, to DRC at Bunagana, then they were then between the government forces and M23 began and then started the fling again. Mm. So the point I'm trying to say is that, and like Sarah, I think it's something that you mentioned, the people who flee, refugees who flee, are not the rich, are not the, the, the business people, are not the politicians. These are sedentary people, growing women and the children, very poor people. Mm. If you look at them crossing, they are running away with one mattress or a basket, a mat, a goat, a jerrican. Those are the properties that they value. That's the properties they value. Mm. So for you, you, would, you can interpret it in the Ugandan terms. If Moses, you are being chased away and you are fleeing Uganda, what is the most valuable thing that you would take with you? A jerrican? That shows the... It the shows you the... Exactly. Mm. So, so, and, so the refugee policy, which... Uh, and uh, it's something that I've worked on for some time refugee policy that Uganda has, it's a very good refugee policy. But where did it come from? Mm. It came from a fact that the people who promote it were themselves refugees mm. at some point. Mm. In particular, this government will have quite a number of people who are refugees themselves. So they understand. Even a country like Rwanda has also a good refugee policy. Why? Mm. The individuals who are running that country knew what it means to be a refugee. Mm. That's one of them. The second, uh, the second aspect about this Uganda uh, refugee policy is that it is informed by the geographical space in which Uganda finds itself. Uganda itself had refugees in South Sudan. 
they were repatriated back to Uganda in 1993. Uganda had refugees in Tanzania, in Kenya. Ali Silakwena, where did she die? She was a refugee in Kenya. Uganda has had refugees, we have had refugees from, from uh, Tanzania. Tanzania, Rwanda, uh, you know, DRC, Somalia. You go, it's like a United Nations if you go to a place like Nachivari to look at the, the, the kind of populations that are there. So no person likes going into a ref refugee. It's the circumstances under which you find yourself. Mm. So these poor, poor people in DRC, <clears throat> much as they want to stay in their country, Mm. When bombs and uh, guns start flying over, you mm. have to seek the easiest place that you can find shelter. And for them, the easiest is crossing over to Uganda. Mm. And hence, and, and uh, under international law, which Uganda is, is, uh, is signatory to the 1951 convention and the 1969 convention, Uganda is obliged to be able to welcome those refugees. Mm. But like Sarah says, there are certain aspects. I wrote uh, my dissertation, my master's thesis was on uh, self reliance of refugees in Uganda. Mm. And the story I began with was a kid who told me that I also want, a Ugandan kid in a Jumani, mm. telling me that I want to become a refugee. Yes, because mm. they are yes. food, they are yes. short of food. Because they, they are short of exactly. shelter. Mm. You see, much as the refugees, you'll find that the UN will come, they'll give you a blanket, they'll give you cooking oil, mm. they'll give you a basin, they'll give you, you can get medication, you can get so a kid who doesn't understand and they now have schools <clears throat> yes they have good schools mm. a kid a ugandan kid who doesn't understand that looks mm. at it and says it's a privilege to be a refugee mm. which is not but i think over a period of time the there has been this notion of uh, the un system particularly the unhcr ceding some of their functions to the local governments mm. so that they can be able to carry out some of the the activities in order for the local population mm. not to feel disenfranchised mm. uh, they they are totally different <laughs> there's mm. a story one time i used to work for a, a, a humanitarian organization in ajumani and one day you know under the the regulations of the unhcr you cannot a vehicle, a UNHCR vehicle cannot carry a Ugandan, a Ugandan. So we are driving and going to a place called Mongola. And when we reached there, we found a Ugandan woman. Mm. She was on the roadside. She was about to give birth. So I told the driver, it was an ambulance that we are in. I told the driver, stop, we take her. The driver said, I can't. They will fire me. Or even you, they will fire you because mm. we can't put a Ugandan into a UN vehicle. Why? It's the regulation they have that oh. those are vehicles for refugees. Okay. I, I, I think I lost it. And I told him, put the woman in the vehicle. She's going to give birth. She's a human being. Uh, we did put the, the woman in the vehicle, we took her to hospital. She gave birth in a German hospital. The next day, I got a letter in which I was warned. The driver was warned and told that that is breach of the UN, the UN rules and regulations. And I said, I think that's uh, partly the reason why I had to end my work there because you can't tell me that. You can't mm -hmm. tell that's me. That's true and people. You, you can't that's tell why, me. you know, to some extent, the people when they are <clears throat> analyzing the, the, the UN presence mm. in, at the grassroots, they look at uh, white cars with the UN written in black. And they think the simple words UN, the space they occupy, is the space that a black person occupies in the architecture of the UN. So when you have such policies that are and people, mm. a woman delivering on the road. And a vehicle that is traveling on the same direction. And it's empty. And it's empty. Yeah, I think some of those laws should have exceptions. Uh, doctor, let me just come back to you. You've made the argument that the solution to the conflict in DRC does not lie in the ESC. DRC joined the EAC, I think less than a year ago, mm. or around there. Yes. I don't know. How do you so find... This year? This year, sorry. March. Yes. Mm. Mm. So how do you find it easy to believe that DRC can walk into a house where its known um, scavengers are? It, it, I, I it, think... it voluntarily joined the EAC, well knowing of the facts that Uganda, Rwanda has been accused for all these things, but you know, went ahead to say, okay, no problem. So is that them trying to find a long-lasting solution to maybe have a seat at the table to say, okay, can we talk about these things? I think in the mind of the DRC, they thought that if they joined their former aggressors, 
they would secure their stability. Mm. Being regarded as one entity, and they, they thought also that even many East Africans thought <coughs> that for the benefit of the, the economic leverage that East Africans can derive from DRC, mm. then DRC will be stable because everybody will be interested in illegal, in illegal yeah. trade, illegal exchanges and illegal engagements, plus the route to the sea. Not illicit things. Not, yes. <laughs> so, but uh, unfortunately, we have had the uh, destabilizing leaders who are seemingly uh, permanent. They are, they, are, they are the wrong serving East African leaders. Unfortunately, Uganda and Rwanda are the only countries in the ESC that are not changing leaders. Mm. And their permanent, the, their problems and interests have become permanent problems of their countries and mm. the region mm. because of that aspect. But if you look at a country like Tanzania, where they had the Mukapa, they had the Chukwete, they had the Magufuri, they are now the fourth president. You look at Kenya, where they moved from Moi, Kibaki. Kibaki, Uhuru, now there is Uruto. You cannot have a single individual be creating a permanent <coughs> problem for a country. But unfortunately for Uganda and Rwanda, Kagame has become a permanent feature. The same applies to Museven. Mm. Their permanent interests, their permanent chaos mm. have become permanent mm. chaos of their countries as well as the DRC. Mm. The same fight in Chisangani, 1998-2000. 99-2000 is likely to repeat itself at any moment because even the commanders, is it, has General Kabar ever retired? No. The same faces. Mm. Some people in Uganda have faced away, the likes of, have, some have died, the likes of Kazini, Mayombo. Well, at least some of them are no longer active, like Kare Kaihura, because he was so involved in that. Yes, role. Kare Kaihura no longer <coughs> active. But on the other side, the, you still have Geno Kabarebe, you still have the same other faces, a few of them have fallen out. Mm. But you still have the same problem that mm. has become permanent. So it is for that reason that I think that the solution, mm. a regional mm. solution for DRC does not lie with ESC because of Rwanda and Uganda. Mm. I think it lies better with SADC because they do not have vested interests, mm. vested illegal and illicit interests in DRC. <laughs> this first, let me just come to you. Sticking with the ESC uh, mm. Federation, should it be proven beyond reasonable doubt that indeed Uganda and Rwanda, yes, I know you've made these assertions, but should it be proven beyond reasonable doubt that indeed these two countries are the biggest perpetrators of the conflict in DRC? And, and, and DRC is also convinced that indeed these two are the problem. Do you think they can walk out, walk out of the ESC? Could they work out of that? <clears throat> no, but you see, um, ESC is not Uganda and Rwanda. Mm. Yes. ESC is a combination of regional interests. The reason, one of the reasons you might you would look at at mm. why DRC decided to come to, to join the ESC. They were comfortable in Sadak, yes. but they just wanted to join the ESC for a number of reasons, and some of them Sarah has alluded to. Access to the sea. Much of the things that the goods and services, the goods that come to DRC, they come from through Mombasa, the, this other part. But for the East African, it was also an advantage because the East African market, we are getting an additional 90 million people. Rwanda has a sorry, DRC, has an addition of 90 million people. Mm -hmm. And now you would have to do the business legally. And that's what Sarah was speaking about. If, if we followed the protocols of the East African community, there's what is called right of movement, mm. right of stay, right of establishment, all those rights that are under the, 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 the Constitutive Act of the East African community yeah. are applicable to all the Congolese. And actually, Moses, the question that we're speaking about refugees would cease being there. Yeah. Because a Congolese being in Uganda, you don't have to be a refugee, refugee because you are in East Africa. Mm. You get. But yeah. simply because... Free movement. Yes, free movement of peoples and goods. Mm. Mm. But now, simply because the East African community... Now, the other thing is that even we, on the other side of the, of the Indian Ocean, because of joining, uh, DRC joining, we also have access to the Atlantic Ocean on the other side of, of, of DRC, Kinshasa, ETC. So the point is that there are so many advantages that could have gotten us into, but like Sarah was saying, 
were we comfortable allowing a, a certain DRC to become so part of us and we forget the pot from which we pick our honey? And that's precisely what has happened. Mm. The moment we allow that everything happens the way... Now, you remember that the first thing that happened uh, when, uh, when DRC joined the East African community, it was fast tracked. No, let me tell you, Sudan, South Sudan, it took them almost about 10 years to join the East African community. Mm. Why? Because there are certain standards which the, the East African community had set on saying you have to have this democracy, you have to have human rights, you have to have this, 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 yeah. which DRC did not comply to. Yeah. Mm. But the head of state uh, 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 quickened the process, mm. well aware that now we are going to get access to the DRC resources legally. Mm. Mm. But of course the DRC people are not stupid. Mm. They, they saw through this and they said that in order for you to come to DRC, let's first pacify. And immediately when that was done, M23 was born. Mm. Yeah. So it's a well orchestrated, orchestrated systematic uh, need to, uh, for these countries, for these regions, the, the routers of DRC to remain intact without anything that is causing them to be say, hey, you are violating X, A, you are violating Y. No, mm -hmm. we are going to remove a non-state actor. Mm -hmm. they, are, they are supporting a non-state actor, which is a, a rebel group. Mm. Very interesting. Doctor, with all the benefits that this mass has outlined for us, that DRC would stand to gain, I mean, all this free movement, all the benefits. The as well as citizens of other countries. Exactly. Do these benefits outweigh the need for them to have a stable eastern region? That should they have put the need for us to pacify our region first, even before you put up front the interest of, okay, by us joining there, even when we know that our biggest accusers are there in that room, we shall join because of the good benefits that this must has mentioned to us. Do those benefits, should they have outweighed the need for them to say that, no, we won't join that group because our perpetrators are in that group? Let them first, you know, I mean, let's first pacify our, our, our country, then we can join EAC. So was it a rushed move for them to join EAC? It was a rushed Should move. Should they have focused more we on... We spoke against mm. it because the admission of a member to a regional grouping should follow a systematic step-by-step -step process. So when you have these steps not followed, the first step should be harmonization with the Common Markets Protocol and the Customs Union. Mm. These are the challenges we have with South Sudan. South Sudan joined mm. without harmonizing issues like waiver of visas. And mm. for the longest time, they've been charging Ugandans visas. Mm. Mm. I don't mm. know whether they are still charging. Um, Although Uganda refused to, to, to uh, charge them in, <laughs> back to, to, to reciprocate. Yes. Mm. I don't know whether they are still charging. I, I heard some time back because in which it, they, they were saying that they yeah, were lifting. That wave that they, they waved. waved. There is no point. way. It, mm. it shouldn't even be a waiver. The common mm. market protocol is clear. If you say you are signing up to join the East African community, mm. you should forget about visa revenue. And if you think you still need visa, visa revenue, then don't join. Mm. Mm. Those are the steps that these countries are supposed to follow. But because it is a politically motivated process, like mm. the admission now of Somalia, which is about to happen, how do you admit a failed state? You, are, you want to be a congregation of failed states. Mm. What would be the reason for admitting Somalia in the East African community? Sincerely. Other than the political mm. sinister motives of a few leaders. Mm. What would be the reason? But you see, perhaps maybe the reason could be... Let's compare mm. with the EU. Mm. If when countries want to join the EU, they have to up their game. Mm. Democracy. You have to meet a certain criteria to join the EU. And it's a process and they keep supervising. Do you meet the threshold? And that's why you see the EU is stable. But when you sit and say, I want a federation, I want my puppet leaders to be there with me. I want, and you, you are not following any process. If you have a customs union, the first step for these countries would be to follow, comply mm. with the, the, the requirements of a customs union and common market, market protocol. protocol. Mm. Once you qualify, then you can join. In that period, you, you can be co-opted mm. as you comply. Mm. And 
these are these steps are followed even in re regional organizations like step, uh, the Great Lakes Conference. You first become a co-opted member. You see how you need to behave. They check whether you qualify. Mm. How about in an interstate agency like ESC? Mm. Why should we wake up and say in three months we have first struck, interministerial has approved? Mm. What is the rush about? On the hopes of the DRC people, I'm sure they genuinely hoped mm. that they could achieve stability for their country by sitting on the same people with the ones who have interest. Because if you have a common market protocol and a customs union, if you have been invading your neighbor for trade opportunities, now you are free to trade with no encumbrances. Why are you then attacking them? Why don't you help them? Mm. That's why pacifying the Eastern DRC was the number one agenda. Mm. Help them stabilize, benefit your citizens to engage in normal trade. But because now, and, and, and don't take it away from the, the, the economic crisis. Mm. Economic crisis of COVID, economic crisis by Ukraine, and mm. now the global slow recession. Mm. Governments need the minerals from DRC mm. to be able to continue their patronage ways of keeping themselves in power. Because now they don't have money, luxurious money to throw around hungry people. Mm. This must, let me yes. get to you. Woodrow Wilson, as USA president, championed the idea of League of Nations. And this came at a time when there was so much conflict in Europe. There was the Batalic War, I mean, there were all these wars, the First World War and all these things. And his argument was that let us have a strategic security agenda. That the more we come together, is we shall have a more better uh, security outlook. Mm. The EAC is <clears throat> continuously having members join it. And our, our block is growing much more bigger. Are we taking the right approach? Is there a strategic security agenda that we are pursuing as member states? That even when Somalia is destable, but the mere fact that they would join us, they could end up realizing some sort of stability because of the strategic security that we shall be pursuing as a bloc. So what the, are we pursuing the right direction with regards to integration of the EAC? Or there are sinister motives that could you know, frustrate? The, the, the founders of the East African community, um, that was uh, uh, Julius Nyerere, uh, Jomo, Kenyatta. Jomo Kenyatta and Milton Obote. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. I think at that time, those who were statesmen, they knew exactly what they were doing. They were trying to help their citizens to be able to integrate, to be able to trade with each other. And at that point... And have better facilities. Uh, exactly. And, and they did. They did have better facilities. Yeah. You remember that... Uh, you remember actually Kenya was, was born out of the East African airline. The railway. The railway. Yeah. The, the sharing of the, the, the Indian Ocean, the, the, the Indian Ocean and the, the, the sea, yeah. the seafare. Yeah. The, the, there are many. There are many things. Yeah. Soroti Aviation School was part of the East African... Yeah. The East African Development Bank. Yeah. There were quite many... A lot of yeah. things that they had done. Post and telecom. Yeah. Airline. Airline, there are many. East African Court of East African Justice. Justice. Yes. So, so there are many. But then ESC expanded. It expanded at a point when, when it was reborn, when after Ida Min, of course, had scuttled it and, the, uh, and it had stopped being functional. When it came back, when then it started, that's what Salah was, was telling me about, that it stopped being the federation of people. Mm. It became the federation of leaders. Mm. And that's where the problem began. Because <clears throat> you started hearing no stuff. The, so now let me let me go back. If you look at the text, the text that forms the East African community, it's extremely very good. Mm. The the protocols, the different aspects, the the chambers, the parliament, the IALA, the the East African Court of Justice. Mm. The, the, there are many things that are in there which are quite very very progressive. Mm. However, the point comes in at the point of saying. Now, but because of the differences between the leaders in the region, because they don't have the same mindset of what Obote, Nyerere, and the, and the, and the Mo, uh, not Moi, Musei and Musei Kenyatta, Kenyatta mm. were thinking at that time, they have turned the East African community into one, a process of someone becoming a powerful leader in the region. So the, ones you call, the one you called the father, the father of, the, father of the nation. 
Pierre Nkurunziza, the late, when he was president of Burundi, mm. and he was also the, the chair of the East African community, because he would not speak to Kagame, mm. for one year, the summit did not take place. Yeah. And they're supposed to have three. No summit happened, because Kagame would not speak to, Kurunziza. to Nkurunziza, and Nkurunziza would not speak to Kagame. Now, is that, who, who is it affecting? Is it the leaders? Or oh, me, a Ugandan, and a certain Burundian who want to trade. Mm. Because Burundi closed its border with Rwanda. <clears throat> Uganda, Rwanda closed its border with Uganda. So what... For two years. So the point is, it, the, feder the East African community, its idea of being federating people, of bringing people closer together and making them strategically trade and coexist culturally, is a very good concept. But mm. it, has, it was hijacked when it became... The heads of states, those are the, the ones who are federating, but not the people of East Africa. All right. Doctor, we have put K uh, Uganda and Rwanda on the spotlight. Are there other Western uh, powers that also share the same interests with Uganda and in the RRC? Adi, Moses, you did ask about evidence. Mm. Do we have evidence? Are these allegations? On two occasions, evidence including using satellite aids, has been abused mm. in the UN Security Council about the role of Uganda and Rwanda in DRC. It is not hearsay, and the records are available. Mm. Yeah. So it is not hearsay that Uganda and Rwanda have sinister motives in DRC. On two occasions, Uganda and Rwanda have tried to deny and have been pinned down using video evidence, using satellite pictures mm. of their roles in DRC. So it is not a matter of, uh, as, a, as a mere allegation. Mm. So when you look at uh, the role that the other countries play, yes, like we said, Sadak, led by Tanzania and South Africa, did join the DRC fresh out M23 because they were tired of the meddling and chaos by Uganda and Rwanda using proxy forces. M23 came after the other rebel group that was led by your namesake. El Orang Hunda. Uh -huh. <laughs> but who was uh, lifted and taken to Rwanda and kept after they were smoked out. So the, 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 the temptation to create proxy forces in DRC by Uganda and Rwanda has a track record with evidence. It is not a new thing. It is not a mere allegation. Mm. I think for me, what has made the problem a permanent feature, as I have said, is the wrong gift of these two leaders. How do we, how can DRC get stability with their, with their continued presence and in power, knowing their intentions? I think we need a neutral force. The principles of peacekeeping in the UN right from Article 2 of the UN Charter mm. are defined by impartiality and neutrality. Uganda and Rwanda do not meet the criteria of impartiality and neutrality and should not join any peacekeeping force where, where the DRC is concerned because they do not meet the basic criteria. Mm. So when you take out Uganda and Rwanda, and given that Tanzania is not interested, because they know the games Uganda and Rwanda play, what remains of a East African peacekeeping force? It is Kenya, and now South Sudan. South Sudan. South Sudan's army capabilities are neither here nor there. So you have one stable country contributing to a regional peacekeeping force. Mm. That's why I'm saying that the DRC is better off looking south mm. than east. And I want to stop at that. Mr. Dismas, <laughs> yes. uh, doctor has told us how the UN has investigated Uganda's in interference and, uh, and Rwanda's in interference in DRC Congo. And besides leaving those, um, well, I haven't even seen sanctions, but besides saying that Uganda should pay this amount of money, they have not done anything much more to indict the countries that they are alleging or that have proven that are the orchestrators of this conflict. Does this speak to the weak international laws that we have in the globe? 
Um, you know, uh, Sarah t told you that there are the investigations. I was, I was, I was privy to a report that was done by a UN expert, mm. a group of experts, yeah. about uh, yes, on DRC, mm. and uh, the facts are very glaring. Mm. The facts are very glaring, and these are this, this is the same report that was presented to the to the to the UN Security Council, in which even individuals were named. Yeah. who are, um, you know, uh, accomplices in the, in the plunder of DRC, accomplices, and even p certain politicians and certain heads of, of governments were mentioned in the, in the report on the, the, to the extent of showing video evidence to show yeah. <coughs> their bank accounts, to show yeah. exactly movement, movement of, of, troops of troops and equipment, movement of money from yeah. banks and, you know, offshore banks, ETC. Mm. So they, they, all those things are available. Now, the the prostitution this one was of uganda uh, involvement in a, in a, by the international court of justice is a small matter yeah. simply because uh rwanda actually was also was initially uh, on the same charge sheet with the with uganda with the but um um they, they 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 are very clever operators they, they there's a negotiation which i was privy to in which they were able to to agree with Congo to pay a certain amount and they strike them off. Yeah, it's ended at mediation. At mediation. But the Uganda one, we were arrogant. We said we are going to win the case and uh, instead we, 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 we lost. Uh, no, we lost maybe. If we had paid the 10 billion, that would have been a, a wake up call. But this. Uh, this 200 and how much million is, 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 is peanuts. I'm told that they but have paid they, the first. When we paid the first installment in mm. the last quarter, yes, our public servants went without salaries. And they're so going it's not just to, peanuts. And it's going, no, I mean, peanuts, that's what they Yes, they it, of course, it was reduced much yes. more. Yes. But even that small amount to pay it is painful. It's the impact very, very on painful. Ugandan is painful. Yeah, exactly. And, mm. Given and, that we are paying for individual crimes, yes. including sexual. Crimes of UPDF. Yes. And it's us who, who is paying, me and you. If you mm. pay taxes, you are paying, you are, this is money that is got from the treasury. It's not that someone is picking it from the loot. That, and some of the people who looted still have the loot. Mm. Yeah. And that's what hurts. Just, doctor, let's, mm. let's speak about the law a little bit. Mm. I know there is vicarious liability that, um, you know, governments can be liable for the actions of their agencies or their their actors in this case so but because we know the evidence we know who they are what then stops us as a country from prosecuting these individuals if indeed their actions were at an individual level they are not influenced by 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 anyone else but their own individual is the state interested in that prosecution and who what are they? stops us is the state. And who are These they? These people who committed crimes on the RC territory are protected by the state. That's why you are paying as an innocent taxpayer. Okay. You are if... paying for their crimes, including sexual tourism and sexual crimes. Mm. It's not just brand. Okay, if our domestic states here don't have the goodwill to prosecute them, I know there is extraterritorial jurisdiction that perhaps DRC Congo has, that they can pursue. DRC Congo is interested in reparations, which mm. they got. Mm. As to whether Ugandans now can, can sue these people who committed crimes and are making everybody pay for their crimes, mm. it's a, if you put in a, a criminal case, mm. because these are, are, are corruption, financial and moral corruption, mm. All co and corruption cases must be sanctioned by the DPP. Hmm. Do you see a DPP sanction in such cases? So the individuals no, are, are too powerful. Do you see a DPP sanction in such a case? <laughs> but you see, even the, there were some levels of prostitution, Moses, yes. uh, at the international level. Yes. Uh, because you know that uh, Jean Pierre Bemba served his time yes. at the International Criminal Court in The Hague. Hmm. Uh, what is his name? Taganda. Taganda is. But a, those are DRC people. They are DRC hey, people. They were yeah. drug caught in individual in, capacity. They're yes. rebel leaders. The mm. rebel leaders. Yeah. The one's child recruitment. Mm. Um, and and the, the, the other. So the case, the, 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 the bit about Uganda, uh, Sarah is explaining to you, is that there was a report by, like I said at the beginning, mm. by Porter, which said it's Moses, it's Sarah, it's Dismas. And that commission, that report was commissioned by the president. Yes. Mm. And handed it to him. 
So why did he do nothing? Maybe when you meet him, he's the best person to answer that question. <laughs> wow. So, so this is very interesting. So these individuals are perhaps too too powerful, and they no, they are, they are they are helping the regime keep power, so mm. they are untouchable they in that regard. Yeah. This must. Yes. Are some of these very good African resolutions that we make laughable because when uh, take an example of the Maputo Protocol of 2005, mm. where we agreed as African states that we must protect the rights of women, mm. you know, and all these very good fundamental human rights, but we don't seem to have the political will to to impact or to or to enact some of these very good documents that we agree to. So, do you think that some of these documents we ratify, we do it just for posturing or for the cameras? But when deep down we we don't have the good will to actually enforce them because. This somehow relates with what is happening in DRC Congo. That we have agreed to, you know, to have a federation and all these things. But again, the accusations of individuals or member states, you know, being part of the problem. So do we ratify these documents at times just out of political pressure? <laughs> Maybe if I, may, if I may come in first before this really must. Mean. Moses, why are you looking for? Do we implement our own rules? Do we implement the constitution? Isn't the constitution a piece of paper that can be edited as and when you want? <laughs> Do you implement the constitution? <clears throat> the constitution has beautiful protections of fundamental rights and freedoms. Mm. Do you implement it? I think Sarah is the best person to answer that question since she works on constitutional <laughs> <laughs> governance. <laughs> Look at our laws. Uganda is mm. known for having good laws. Mm. Our own laws. We enact the president's signs mm. well knowing that they will not implement them under his regime. Mm. So it is the same spirit. The mm -hmm. same spirit that we enact our own laws and ignore them. We do them for posturing and for public relations. Mm. It's the same way we go and sign international protocols. Mm. Posturing and public relations. Mm. Yeah. This was just mm. a peculiar question. Mm. I have not done research or much reading about natural resources, mm. but do natural resources ever get explicit? Like, do they ever get finished because perhaps maybe until the timber or gold in Congo gets finished they will have peace but do natural resources ever deplict <laughs> of, <laughs> so course, of course yeah. of course of course of course some of them get finished oh. uh, they can't be there in perpetuity mm. but the point is there are some countries which have quite a lot of natural resources mm. and DRC is, is one, one of them, them. It's quite a lot. From the times of King Leopold. Yes. And mm -hmm. it's, it's a place, if you look we at a place, still. for example, <laughs> the, uh, um, the, there's a, a place like mm -hmm. Equatorial, like Katanga. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Minos. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can be walking and you'll find a piece of diamond somewhere. Mm -hmm. yeah. that's, that's the level of, 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 the, of, of, the, of the, the kind of things. Mm -hmm. The yeah. forests are heavy. It is a tropical... Uh, tropical forests that they have, mm. these huge timber. They, first of all, the timbers, those ones will get finished. Mm. Uh, even those minnows in the ground, they can't be there in perpetuity. Yes. Mm. But the point is, it has so much mm. that it can't be left by itself. And by the way, let's we can say that Uganda and Rwanda has quite a lot of interest in the minnows of Congo. But like Sarah explained, there are other international Congo yes. mates that have Production. bigger presence than Uganda and, and yes. Rwanda. Mm. The United States of America itself that phone you are, you are you are you are you are using and that pen you are it's it's a result of minerals from Congo. Congo. Mm. The the cotton is used to making that phone. Yeah. Mm. So to that level, each one of us actually we have something about the exploitation of Congo, mm. but it's not as explicit as we we want to know. Because and, and the Congolese <clears throat> don't benefit anything. Exactly. I think that's mm. the biggest problem. Mm. Exploiting minerals wouldn't be a problem, but do those minerals benefit, benefit to the Congolese? If you look at the case, the example I gave of Dan Gittler, he has engaged with four American presidents, including George Bush, George Bush, Obama, Trump, and now Biden. Mm. They, are, they, were, they have all interacted with him as a big businessman. But at least for, to their credit, then they sanctioned him for engaging in corruption in Congo. Mm. and they <coughs> exploiting their minerals without benefiting the people paying taxes and following the normal channels. Mm. 
but, but, but they have also benefited. But Sarah, for him to, that man must be a powerful person. Mm. I know that the, the laws of the US and the system in the US, mm. yes. for him to have been struck off yes, the, the sanctions, sanctions list, of the Magnitsky. The big, the big groups. Mm. It must he, be, must have the highest level of lobbying. Yes, in terms but of the, the, <coughs> part of the evidence they had sanctioned him, he bribed to a tune of 100 million to get them an opera license. Dollars. Uh, yes, dollars. Yes, not shillings. <sighs> Doctor, <laughs> assuming you are assuming you are to advise the government of Kinshasa, mm. would you advise them to take the, the approach that Uganda has taken regarding its minerals? Because Uganda has a minerals and minings act whereby as a citizen you can own land, yes, but should there be any mineral discovered beneath that land, then it is it is property of the government. So do you think that Congo, I, I don't know their laws on the minerals, but do you think that they should enact such a law whereby then the, the minerals in DRC become property of the government and it becomes illegal and illegal in its real sense? Perhaps okay, there is a lacuna in the law. Before I go to the DRC laws mm. and underway, all minerals belong to government. All riches underneath the land belong to government. That is the global standard. So I don't think Congo is an exception. Mm. And that's why people first to go to State House to bribe before they go to, to, to the, the East and DRC to mine. So the presidents are culpable and mm. they are involved in the corruption tendencies and, the, and, 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 and cheating of their own citizens. Mm. Uganda's case might not be good because as I've said, we have good laws. There's no doubt about that. But do we implement them? Uganda's oil alone has been a subject of litigation in the international courts, I think, three times. And we've lost a case mm. where there was bribery, allegation against the head of state, mm. the heritage case. The in heritage defense, they said they were advised to take care of the immediate needs of the president. It is on court record in the United Kingdom. Very embarrassing. Mm. So we might have the laws. But what is the practice, even mm. in Uganda? It is one thing. We have had talks of kickbacks, mm. of how companies come here, except it is a smaller magnitude because we do not have much resources like DRC. Mm. So when you go to DRC, these uh, conflict entrepreneurs who come with dollars and guns and, mm. and weapons, first go to state house. They either support the person in power, or if you are not ready to deal, then they will deal with the rebel group mm. and remove you. Mm. And unfortunately for DRC, then you have rebel groups who control territory. Mm. And you can engage with the rebel group and exploit the minerals. Oh, yeah. Landing mm. with your chopper, pick your minerals and fry up in that control the territory. Mm. So that is the biggest disadvantage DRC has. But as whether those alone can stop that, DRC, first of all, needs an effective government, a government that covers all the regions, because there is minimal presence of government in Eastern DRC. Mm. The second issue they need is genuine and honest leaders who can say, look, I am not here to enrich myself. The resources of DRC must benefit the Congolese people. Mm. So once you get to those two things, then you can be able to say, because I think if DRC was not benefiting from illegal trade, mm. they would have more interest in pacifying the East than they do. Because I think they are also giving it a casual approach. This was yes, just conclusively. Uh, can, <clears throat> can someone say without fear of doubt that some of the leaders of DRC have are non-patriotic and that the conflict in DRC is partly their own making and they are benefiting from it? Is there some lack of patriotism right there? You see, the word patriotism is defined by who? Who defines patriotism? Okay, nationalism, let me say that. Because, <laughs> <laughs> because it's, it's a... Love very... for country. I mean, <laughs> love for country. <laughs> so this is love for your country. <laughs> so the, the, I, I think what, what, what DRC needs um, is that it has had good people. Uh, if, for example, you remember Patrice Rumumba, mm. it has had... But that's why he was pulled. Yes, of course, Because the people knew because... that they couldn't do what they are doing today. Exactly. Mm. So they had, had he organized kill. that camp? Yes. If he had organized that camp. Look, DRC has a dam. It's called Inga Dam. Mm. Mm. Inga Dam can supply electricity to the whole of Africa. And Europe. 
and, and parts Europe. of Europe. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And but you see, see what's happening. You, they can't. They don't even have electricity in this part of their place. There's nothing. So the point is, mm. it's not question, just saying waking up and standing on the hill and you say, "I'm patriotic. I love my country." It's what you do. It's the actions of the things, the definition of how you protect. Let's have an effective government in all places of DRC. Mm. Let's not pay lip service of saying that I want to enrich myself. In the 10 years I'm in power and poof, I am gone because mm. I've got what I wanted. Should look at Joseph Kabila, no, yeah, Joseph Kabila, the son, mm. boy, extremely very rich. Mm. He has even just finished doing a PhD. Mm. So the point is DRC is, 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 is a, a, a it's too rich to be left alone. That's what the Americans define it. Yeah. It's too rich to be left alone. Mm. So everybody will keep an eye on DRC. They will make sure that they, they get the non-patriotic, if the whatever exists, presidents, whom they can be able to confuse and, co and control, and, control yeah. and be able to exploit the natural resources to enrich themselves. As basic. Wow. Our last words on the show, Doctor. DRC conflict, how best can they address this? How do they move forward? I think the DRC, the Congolese need to wake up. Mm. For a long time, also they have a kind of laid back lifestyle. Mm. And they settle for this. Mm. So they, love the, they love their music. They love their music. They they are, once they have eaten a piece of meat, they can enjoy music till morning. Mm. They need to wake up and know that they love, the world has left them behind and they have been disadvantaged by the, their rich, rich resource country, instead of looking at it as an advantage and, advance, and, and developing themselves. Mm. So if you got active citizenry in DRC, mm. they would push back mm. and get an effective leadership to stabilize their country and exploit it for their own benefit. This must your last words. Um, How do they move forward? <laughs> um, you know, actually Congolese, I think, uh, like I said earlier, I think they have they already been, um, you know, culturally and economically linked with East Africa. I think it's just the question of saying on how to make it much more formal mm -hmm. and make the business formal, let the people pay taxes. And I do think there is nothing that would stop the conflict in Congo with a better system of how those resources are traded. Yeah it will end that conflict in DRC mm. yeah. without anyone using a gun. Mm. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Dismas. Thank you, Dr. Prosper, in the time to be on the Citizens Chat Show. Well, from us to you, we say have a lovely Friday. Have a lovely weekend. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. And next week, same time, same place. But don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like this channel because each and every single week we bring you weekly sense of conversations. See you next week, same time, same place. Bye-bye.